right on the heels of my report on interleukin-25, another interleukin molecule hit the scene. And this time, by a biophysicist who decided to use a supercomputer to search thousands of molecular combinations so he could find the best configuration to block a small protein molecule known as interleukin-6 that plays a role in causing both breast and prostate cancer. Chenlong Li, PhD, a professor at the Medical Chemistry and Pharmacology Department at Ohio State University, is using this select configuration to develop a drug to block interleukin-6, and that's abbreviated as IL-6, should you read about it in the study we're talking about. Now, interleukin-6, it isn't all bad. It acts as an immune response messenger, and that helps us fight infections, recover from burns, traumatic injuries, and other types of similar trauma to the body. But in people who have cancer, their bodies fail to turn off this response and overproduce interleukin-6. So Dr. Lee is trying to disrupt the cellular messages that trigger interleukin-6 into action by using fragment-based drug design. Now in the report he said there's an inherent connection between inflammation and cancer, which we referred to the last uh, report. And in configuring the new drug, he's using combinations of three proteins to form a six-sided molecular complex, and that's called a hexamer to interrupt the transmission of signals that incite the production of this interleukin-6, which over time cause cellular inflammation and potentially cancer. Now in the case of breast cancer, interleukin-6 levels in patients that were studied with various types of breast cancer, they were consistently as high as 40-fold the norm especially women in late-stage breast cancer and those who had metastatic or recurrent disease. Now, his findings built on a 2002 study by Japanese researchers, and they discovered medindoline A, or MDL-A, and this is a non-toxic molecule created naturally by marine bacteria, but it's known and found capable of mildly suppressing interleukin-6, the signal of interleukin-6. But unfortunately, the molecule wasn't able to bind strongly enough to become effective in treating cancer, although it became evident that it would have been too difficult anyway and too expensive to create a synthetic version. But the final deterrent came when they realized further on in the study that, to their surprise, that the very bacteria that produced this MLD, MLD, MDLA had actually mutated and made this molecule totally ineffective. It was very discouraging. However, during the same period, scientists at Stanford were able to create a static image of the crystalline structure of the interleukin-6, as well as two other relevant proteins. So what happened is acknowledging the possibilities inherent in these two initial studies, Dr. Lee partnered with an organic chemist and a cancer biologist at Ohio State's James Cancer Institute, and he wanted to extend this research using supercomputer intelligence to construct 3D color simulations of the new protein complex, showing its two hot spots for binding interleukin-6 and the interactions between the protein components of this molecule and the strength of their binding at these hot spots. That's key to the effectiveness in blocking excess production of the interleukin-6, which is known to contribute to the growth of breast and prostate cancer. And their objective in this is to re-engineer a new set of compounds that preserve the original organic properties while making it more potent and efficient. And the initial phase of the study has resulted in identifying these compounds with the highest likelihood of being developed into a non-toxic drug, isn't that music to our ears, capable of being taken orally. Now so far, Dr. Lee's you know, search through the more than 6,000, 6,000 drug fragments that he's identified 
two potential solutions that preserve the important binding features of this MDLA, which was identified by the Japanese study, while yielding molecules that are also easier to synthesize than its original form, so that can be mass produced. Now, in the research world, it's not uncommon to take 20 years to get a drug from what we call the bench to the bedside, in other words, the research bench to the patient. So it would be quite an accomplishment if this drug could be fully developed within the next two years as currently predicted by Dr. Lee. It would be incredible. And it would also be exciting for another reason. This research opens up new therapeutic uh, it's, it's actually a, um, a new uh, therapeutic paradigm for both targeting the microenvironment in which the tumor is growing and inhibiting the tumor stem cell renewal. It's, it's important from both ends. You're getting it while the, the, the cells are being produced, but also when the cells are actually matured in the environment. And if they are successful, this will be great news for circumventing the problem of breast cancer tumor drug resistance, as well as slowing down tumor metastases and stopping tumor recurrence. However, like all drugs, there's going to be much testing with lengthy and extensive monitoring evaluations. But nonetheless, the study will be an exciting one to follow. So let's pray they pull this one off so I can one day focus only on staying cancer-free and aging well with you.